So what if I told you that there is a way to get parts of an array or a string in Rust without copying the whole thing? And this is the magic of slices in Rust, which is the way of referencing a sequence of elements in a collection. That's why in this video I'll show you two examples on how you can use slices in Rust and one really simplified real-world use case. Okay, so I've already told you in the beginning that slices in Rust are basically just a way of referencing a sequence of elements in a collection. And this collection can be an array or really even a string. Now these slices in Rust are really powerful because they allow you to point to some contiguous memory without really taking ownership of the original data. So in the end they are just a view into contiguous memory without taking ownership. Now there's also something which is called pattern matching, where you can leverage slices in Rust. But I won't demonstrate this in this video. I'll probably make another video just for pattern matching in Rust. Okay, so let's get into the first example here, where we are basically just creating a simple vector or an array in this case. And then we are just creating some numbers in this array. Okay, so how can we now leverage slices with this specific array? What we can do, let's just say S1, right? And then we will just reference the vector and then we will apply the slicing technique. So what we can say is the reference, or we are not taking ownership here, the reference of V, and then we are going to basically access the elements inside the vector. And in here, we are going to make use of the dot dot slicing functionality. So for instance, we can say one dot dot three. And what this basically means is that it takes the first element until the third element exclusively. So basically the first element is one and the third element is zero, one, two, three, which is three in this case, right? So what we are going to take here is only one to two. So S1 should contain the numbers one and two. Let's quickly verify that by just printing it to our console here. And if we now run cargo run, we do get the array one, two back. Now the really important thing to understand here is that we cannot really take ownership of V in this case. So if we do this, right, if we just remove the reference, this will not work because Rust restricts us to whenever we want to use this slicing technique, we do not take ownership of the original data. And what we actually get here as an error is that the size for values of type vec and then integer cannot be known at compilation time, right? So the whole point of a slice is basically only to access a specific range of elements inside of a vector without taking ownership. And we can even enhance this here. So let's say as one, this is really basic, right? We just take the numbers from index one to index three exclusively, but we can do a lot more with it. So let's have S2, S3 and S4 here. And what we can say is just dot dot. So until the index three of our vector, right? What we can also say is start at the index one and go until the end of the vector, right? This does also work. And if we want like the whole vector, right? A slice of the whole vector, we can just say dot dot. So this also works here. So let's quickly demonstrate this by just printing S2, S3 and S4. And if we now run our code, what we get is obviously the first is the S1 slice or the S1 vector. Then our S2 slice only contains 0, 1, 2 because we said go from the beginning until the index 3 exclusively. Then we said that S3 should start at index 1, right? So the number 1, which is at index 1, until the end of the vector. And then the last slice just said that we want all the elements of our array here. All right, so the beautiful part of this slicing technique is that we can also make use of this technique in strings. So let's just say that we have a message, right? Now, the lovely thing in here is that this also works with non-heap allocated strings, right? So with normal strings here. So we can have heap allocated strings and non-heap allocated strings. Now let's just say that we maybe want to get hello and world, right, without a comma and without any spaces. So what we can say is just declare a new variable, hello, and then we say and, right, because we don't want ownership, 
message. And then we say start at the index zero, which is basically H, right? And then we count one, two, three, four, five. So we want until the index five, which should contain the whole word hello, right? Let's just say that we also want world as another variable. And here we say message and we start at seven, right? Index seven. And we just go until the end because there is no additional word or additional character after the world here. So let's quickly print this and then we go to another quick example. So what we got if we run this code, we basically do get hello world as two separated strings. So this is pretty cool. We can also apply the slicing technique for strings here. One thing I also want to show you quickly here is that we can also mutate slices, which in the end, because we do not take ownership, we just borrow it, it will also manipulate the original vector or array. So let's quickly create a colors array, which is mutable. And then in here we say red, blue, and green. Now then we create a slice, which we mark as mutable. And then we borrow the mutable colors, basically. And here we only want, let's just say one till the end, right? So we have blue and green. And then what we can do is we can say slice at the index zero is equal to purple. And this will also work, right? So if we now print our slice first, and then our original array colors, and then we print this example here, we do get for the slice purple and green. And for the original data, we do get red, purple and green, which is expected, right? Because we do borrow a mutatable instance here of our colors array. And then we manipulate the first element of the slice, which in the end points to the original data, right, which is mutatable, right. And in the end, we are also manipulating the original data with this manipulation here, because we are, like I said before, borrowing a mutatable instance of our colors array. All right, so let's get quickly into a real world simplified example here. So what I want is a text analyzer. Now in this really simple text analyzer is some kind of struct and it contains a text, right, which is of type string. Now and let's just create a constructor here and a function. So we do say fn new, right, this is the common convention in Rust. And then we say text, which is a string, right, so a simple non heap allocated string. And in here we will return a text analyzer which in the end just contains this text, which is then allocated as a heap allocated string. And obviously here we also need a text analyzer, right? So what we can also say here, instead of using text analyzer everywhere in this constructor, we can just say self, right? And self basically points to the text analyzer struct name. Right. So in the end, this gives us some convenience. If we want to rename text analyzer, we just have to rename the implementation here and the struct itself, right? Without really renaming the return type or whenever we initialize the text analyzer here. All right. So let's create a function and we call it analyze word length. And this function takes in one parameter which is the word slice itself. Now we do not want to take ownership and that's why we have this vector here. And this will just for convenience will be a non heap allocated string. And in the end, we do want to return a tuple where we have a u size, which is the length of a specific word and then also the actual word, right? What we can also say is we can also specify here non heap allocated string instead of a heap allocated string. Now this would be too complicated, right? With lifetimes and all that stuff. So I just want to keep things simple here. Obviously you can refactor this function, right? To leverage the non heap allocated strings. All right, let's just implement this logic here. It should be really simple. So max length is zero. And then we also have the max word, right? Or let's just say word, which is a string. Well, let's just rename this to longest word. And in the end, these two variables should be returned. So we say return or we just get rid of return. And then we say max length and longest word. Okay. And then we obviously need to transform this to a heap allocated string. So we say two string here. Okay. So what we do now is to iterate over the words 
Now, obviously, you can refactor this logic as well. I think there might be a more efficient way to do this. Like I said before, we do not really focus on this specific logic here. We will focus only on the slicing functionality. So we say word slice, and if the length of the word is greater than the max length, we just say max length is equal to word.length, right? And then longest word is equal to word. And this is our whole functionality, right? Really easy. All right, so we have our first function. Let's just create another function, which we will call get word range. Now I'll show you in a minute here why we actually need this function. Now this takes in a start and a end. And in the end, this function will return a vector of strings. Right, so what we will say here is self.text, right, because we actually saved the text in our struct. Then we say split white space to kind of get the words in our text, right? We really keep things simple here. And then we say dot collect to basically collect these splitted words into a vector, right? So now in the end, we do have a vector which contains possibly all the words inside of an array. And here is now where the slicing magic comes into place. So we say here, start and then dot dot end, right? And this is how we can get a specific word in a specific range. So maybe we will refactor this or rename this function to get word in range, right? Now this won't work because this does not return a vector. So we just say to vec here to basically transform the slice into a vector. Now, obviously we can make use of windows and ranges here, right? This would also work for getting a word in range, but I just want to demonstrate the powerful functionality of using slices here. Right, so let's just apply this example by just creating a simple text here. So let text, and then we say the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. A right? simplified example here. And then we create the text analyzer. So let's just say TA, right, text analyzer. And we say text analyzer new, and we pass in the text, right? This will work. And what we can say now is we first do get the word slice, which in the end is not really a slice because it is an array, but it is a sliced version of the original text, right? And now we say TA, get word in range, and then we say one to four, right? And let's just quickly print this word slice here, right? Selected words, let's quickly run our project. And what we got is quick brown fox. Why? It's pretty simple because we split by white space first, right? So every single word is now in our array, in our vector. And then we take or we make use of the slicing functionality here. We go from one until four exclusively. So we basically select quick, the word quick, brown and fox, right? And in the end, word slice does now contain these three words, quick, brown, fox. And what we can say now or what we can make use of now is the analyze word length functionality, right? Because now we can make use of the word slice and we only want to analyze these three words and we want to get the longest word out of these three words. So in the end, we just pass the reference, right? We do not want to own or the function does not want to own this word slice. And in the end, we just print here the longest word and we say word and we also want to print length here now if we run this code again what we do get is that quick is the longest word which obviously makes sense now obviously brown has the same length as quick because it's five letters in the end however it always selects the first one the first longest element in the vector right and that's why quick is the longest word here. Now, hopefully you understood everything what we've done here. I think slices are really powerful and they are really easy to understand, specifically in Rust. Now, as I've mentioned before, if you're curious about the difference between the heap allocated string and the non-heap allocated string, then I highly recommend watching this video here as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye bye.